Welcome to Kachi Vachi. Today we are going to fumble our way through making a beanbag chair with memory foam instead of beanbag filler. <laughs> this is for a one and a half year old who absolutely adores sitting on anything and everything. She definitely falls into that mindset of if I fit, I sit, like the little cat memes. Uh, so anything that she can turn into a chair, she will. So we decided to make her her own chair. She already tested it out and adores it. Honestly, this is super easy to make for any grandkid or baby or nephew, niece, any little person in your life. It probably took about 30 minutes to put together and I could choose the fabrics by making it ourselves as opposed to having to go with like pink or blue or Disney. And for about the same price as buying one, you can have a bespoke one and it's just super fun that way. Okay guys, before we start, let's talk about what we need to get going. I have a rotary cutter, ruler, cutting surface. I have a pressing surface if you need to press your fabrics. I am using wool. This is a durable fabric. It was in a color that I wanted. You can use upholstery fabric, canvas, duct, anything like that that is nice and sturdy. I have these cut to 24 inch by 30 inch because it is for a one and a half year old. Hey guys, this is Jordan in the future. Don't take these measurements to heart. Uh, we will explain why later on in the video. And then I also have straight pins. I'm using a serger because I have one. It's going to prolong the life of your beanbag. These seams are going to get a lot of wear. So I'm just going to serge the edges of my material. Or you can use a zigzag stitch on a sewing machine. And then I also will have a sewing machine with matching thread. Oh yeah. And memory foam. We got five pounds of memory foam. For this baby bag, you would probably need more if you're doing one for like a three or four year old. You can also substitute this with bean bag. This was, I think, like $25 on Amazon, so it's up to you. Okay, we're gonna start by taking our two rectangles and lining them up right sides together. You will serge with a short stitch length the long sides of each of your rectangles. Once you've serged those long edges, fold your bean bag in half so that those serged edges are laying one on top of the other. Measure about six inches from the serged edge and then make yourself a curve to the folded edge. We're going to cut this off. This is going to form a rounded edge to the front of our bean bag. I literally just eyeballed this. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be exactly six inches. You just want a gentle curve here. Serge your curve. Once you've surged your curve, you're gonna line up the two seams and you're gonna stitch about six inches in on either fold. This is the part we screwed up. This wound up being a little bit superfluous for us because we used a five pound bag of beanbag filler and rectangles that were 24 by 30 inches. So that left too much empty space in our beanbag. So I ended up cutting off those six inches that I surged in. So that was kind of superfluous. We wound up cutting off six inches, which made our beanbag 18 inches by 24 inches. And that wound up being perfect for the five pounds of beanbag filler that we had. So if you either have more beanbag filler, then you could do that step and it would work great for you. Or you could cut your fabric 18 by 24 inches to begin with. <laughs> we would suggest that you probably just cut your fabric 18 by 24 inches and then you can like sew up six inches and so you don't have a giant opening to seam closed when you're done. Even with the extra material, you can watch us struggle to get this foam into the bag. I would definitely recommend having a vacuum or like broom on hand to clean up the mess afterward. The goal, get as much bean bag filler into your bean bag as you can without making a huge mess. <laughs> In order to reinforce this seam, I went ahead and serged it, clipped my corners, and then folded it to the inside so that that serged edge wouldn't show and just top stitched along that edge. 
If you were going to put in a zipper, this would absolutely be where you could put that zipper in. My daughter is not old enough to not eat the memory foam. So we needed to seam it closed so that she could not get into it. If you're using bean bag filler, it does lose its form over time and need to be refilled. So a zipper is great for that because then you can just add more bean bag filler as needed. That wasn't really an option for us. Hopefully the memory foam is gonna hold its shape longer than bean bag filler will. So this bean bag could just get passed down to our next kid. Also, we were getting extra hipster points for ordering memory foam instead of bean bag filler. That is it. It's super simple super fun and I guarantee your kid will love it. Our daughter is so obsessed and she's only like one and she sits in it with the biggest smile on her face. I know this part got really fuzzy here in the middle. Send us a line in the comments and we will help you out as best as we can. All right guys, thanks for joining us as we botched things up and rerouted and did it a different way. Hopefully it will be a long lasting source of joy and entertainment for our little girl and for any of the littles in your life who you make it for. If you have any tips or techniques or anything that you would change, absolutely send us a note in the comments. I would love to see what you would have done differently. If you wanna see how Frances likes it and see her sitting in her chair, check us out at Kachibachi on Instagram. We'll be posting pictures of that there. You can follow us on Facebook for any fun content as well. And subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. Let us know what fun projects you're working on in the comments below. Until next time, happy sewing!